The Selfish Path to Romance. Download Chapter 1 for free at drkenner.com and at amazon.com. Mark, welcome to the show. Mark? Yes, I'm here. Oh, wonderful. Mark, what's on your mind? What's your question? What causes uh, misery and suffering so much? Okay, give me a specific example. If you hold it that way in your mind, Mark, you won't get very far because it'll just seem too global, too unmanageable. Is it your mother, your father, a sibling, uh, a friend, or yourself? Give me one, the most important example for yourself of misery and suffering. What well, makes me miserable? You are miserable. You're miserable. Yeah. Okay, I can't say the word. Yeah, tell me about that. Which- well, I I don't know. I just live kind of like an isolated existence, you know, and I don't have any people in my life. You're lonely. Yeah. Okay. When you think about making friends, what what experiences have you had? Well, most of them pretty bad with other people. It's, nothing ever seems to go well, you know. It's just, they want to talk about themselves and everything. They sit there and listen to their nonsense for hours on end. Okay, what do you do for a living, Mark? What? What do you do for a living? I'm a crossing guard. Are you a crossing guard? Yeah. Is that what you wanted to be when you were young? No. No, what did you want to be? Well, later in life, I kind of wanted to be a rocket scientist. I'm not a rocket. Let me just work at NASA, you know. Where NASA? Yeah, NASA. Yeah. That that was your goal. Yeah. And w- what could you do now that would move in the direction in that direction, or just probably even... nothing. It's too late in life. How old are you? Forty-two. Okay, um, you're forty-two years old. I want to tell you, I went to ba- back to school ten years out of school. I have a friend at the age of forty who gave up his entire career and applied, went back and got a college degree. Wow in history and ancient Greek. I mean, who? who There's so who? many people tell me that I'm not college material and I could never do it. And I had straight Oh, hands. don't let, I was told I was a housewife, a housewife that I should be barefoot and pregnant. Mm. And, oh, I can see You're my You're sure husband. not a housewife. <laughs> and, uh, what is it anybody else's business to tell you what you can do with your life? Who uh, told you to be a crossing guard? Nobody told me. I just needed the money bad, you know, because I, I get disability and it's not even enough to live on every month. Okay, what the heck are you on disability for? Well, um, I went through a, a bad mental illness in my life, and it was debilitating uh, because I couldn't even function on my job. So, what what was the diagnosis? Paranoid schizophrenic. Paranoid schizophrenic. Okay, are you on medication? Yes, I am, and it doesn't seem to be helping much. <laughs> okay, so this paranoia has been around for a very long time, right? Yeah. So what I would do is you need to yes, you've built a habit and you've got this parent this this problem that's always been a part of you. Is there any is has there ever been a time in your life when you haven't felt paranoid? Just I don't even care, even if it's a, a moment. Hey, I gotta interrupt this because we've gotta pay some bills. Thirty seconds, that's it. A very quick ad and then Alan will be back. Romance. Oh, I wish guys knew more about what we want from a relationship. Boy, I wish I knew more about what I want. Where's that ad I saw? Ah, here it is. The Selfish Path to Romance. A serious romance guidebook. Download Chapter 1 for free at SelfishRomance.com and buy it at Amazon.com. Hmm, The Selfish Path to Romance. That is interesting. Yes, you've built a habit and you've got this parent this this problem that's always been a part of you. Is there any is has there ever been a time in your life when you haven't felt paranoid? Just I don't even care, even if it's a, a moment. Um Yeah, when I well they have my Christmas Christian friends at this college one time they were all talking to me and reading my newspaper and it's the only really time I left it felt then feel left out, you know. You did not feel left out? Yeah. Okay, so you know it's possible to you, right? right? And right now, are you feeling paranoid about me? You? Yeah. A little bit, yeah. A little bit. On a scale of 1 to 100, where would you say I rank? Probably 40. 40. Okay, well, that's good. So 60% of you is not paranoid, right. feeling paranoid with me. So notice you can make some movement in your life. You don't have to walk around with a label or a T-shirt that says, I'm a paranoid schizophrenic. Right. You can say, I'm, I used to have a problem and I'm getting over it. And right. make it a goal in your life to well, learn. I, you know, I know, but this last six months, um, it, the, the paranoia's left me. 
for some reason. I, I feel like a whole human being again now for the first time in quite a while. Okay, your voice lifts up a little bit as you say that. Right. So you feel like a, a human being. Have you connected with anyone? Because you started by saying you were miserable and that you're lonely and nothing goes well. So is there someone that you've connected with that's challenging a really deep premise that you have that you can't get along with people and they'll talk behind your back? Well, I have a friend that lives out west. He's so far away, I call him on the phone once in a while. He's like the greatest guy I've ever known, you know. He really he cares about other people's problems and stuff, you know. So he listens to you. You yes, feel visible yes, exactly. with him? Do He's you like a sounding board for me. Yeah, do you feel visible with your parents? Yeah, when we go out to dinner and stuff, my stepmother makes takes pot shots at me and stuff. And oh, she does. What does yeah. she give me one bad example? Example Well, she said I hadn't worked anywhere as very long, how you like the way her life turned out and it's kinda of, she's kind of a jerk, I mean. Okay. I recommend not going out to dinner with her anymore. Right. And I recommend earning some money uh, or or during, you know, saving up your money. Do you drink or do drugs or anything? No. Oh, cool. So you've got that to your credit. And right. saving up your money to take a trip out to visit your friend. Right. You need to have positive values in your life. Instead of going through life focusing on the negative, you you a lot of people do that. I've done that myself. Mm. You want to shift that around and start. Negativity will destroy you eventually. I mean, it's just... Who, what, say that again. Negativity will eventually destroy you. I think if you dwell on it. Yeah, actually, it's if I were negative, I'd be destroying myself. So y you want you could see a cognitive therapist. You could go to a website, academyofct.org, and see if there's anyone in your area who specializes in helping you with loneliness, helping you learn social skills, helping you take some chances, take some risks, and learn how to be rejected. I've been rejected many times. I've been stood up when I in my dating years. You never forget those moments, huh? Um, but I, you also need some better identity than a crossing guard. A crossing guard is a good transition job, mm -hmm. but try to build on that. What would be the next step for you? It's not going to be working at NASA right away, mm -hmm. but you may be able to work at a science lab around here, a research lab or something. So don't give up on yourself. It is yeah. your life. Set the goals reasonably. You can even talk with a counselor about that. Right. But then well, you... I belong to this organization. It's called Catholic Charities. And I think they think we should just stay with them the rest of our lives. Yeah, no, don't don't stay with them because ruined more people than I can really? speak of. Yeah, <laughs> because it's a self sacrifice self sacrificing view of life rather than a happiness view. Of of life. Right. So I would get a rational therapist. I would get a cognitive therapist. And again, mm -hmm. um, you can look at the website, academyofct.org, and you can call me back and let me know how things are going. Wait, what's, what's the website again? It's called Academy, A-C-A-D-E-M-Y, of CT for cognitive therapy right. dot org and it gives you some information on that that should be of help. You can oh. also go to my website drkenner.com D R K E N N E R and I hope that helps you Mark. Listen, thank you so much for calling. And here's a little more from Dr. Kenner. You can't stand alone, give in. Learn to get along with people. Start to design the kind of buildings everybody else does. Then you'll be rich, you'll be famous, you'll be admired. You'll be one of us. Is that what disturbs you about me, Peter, that I want to stand alone? Is that it? And that's from the Fountainhead. You've probably faced those moments many times in your own life where you feel like you have to just go along and give in and shut up and do what other people want or act the way other people want you to act, and you're not true to yourself. And it takes a toll on your character. And you don't want to do the opposite, which is to rebel against people just because they're doing something. What you want is genuine psychological independence, learning to think for yourself. And I learned that from the book that that came from. That came from the movie The Fountainhead. The book The Fountainhead by Ayn Rand is, it turned my life around. It turned my life around. You'll hear many people say that about Ayn Rand. And if you go to my website, drkenner.com, you may discover how to find your own independent, your own, your own ability, your own courage to be independent and to pursue your happiness in life, your rational goals. For more Dr. Kenner podcast, go to drkenner.com and please listen to this ad. Here's an excerpt from The Selfish Path to Romance, the serious romance guidebook by clinical psychologist Dr. Ellen Kenner and Dr. Edwin Locke. 
A source of friction in romance may appear when one partner makes considerably more money than the other. The higher income earner may feel entitled to make all the major financial decisions, and the one who earns less may feel like a second-class citizen. The big money maker could also be a cheapskate, spending much less than can readily be afforded, making the other feel devalued, determining who will manage the bill paying and investments, possibly both partners, budget amounts and categories, joint or separate savings accounts, and whether to have a prenuptial agreement, especially if one partner is wealthier than the other, are questions to explore when seriously considering a long-term partnership or marriage. You can download Chapter 1 for free by going to drkenner.com and you can buy the book at amazon.com.